Hello Svengers, it's me Svenny McG. Now, we all love the Sega Genesis and of course it was known for a lot of its crazy add-ons, not the least of which was this guy here, the Sega CD. This is the second model of it because there is a stackable one where the console sat directly on top. This is the model too. It's going to still hook up the same way. We're going to go through that process and we're going to make sure we go all in on the audio because you'll see a difference. Let's check it out. Okay guys, to start, note that we're gonna be using a Model 1. Model 2 is gonna connect the exact same way. On the underside of the console, first we're gonna lift this drawer. It just slides off. And underneath you're gonna see this little red piece of plastic. And if you can see that there, it says, do not remove. Guess what? We're gonna remove. You pretty much don't wanna leave it just exposed, but in this case, this is the connector pin to the Sega CD. Again, for the sake of conversation, this is the Model 2. And exact same thing, slide that cover off, slide off the do not remove piece of plastic shielding, and you're gonna use those pins. This is my Sega CD. This is the Model 2 edition. In this case, this one here is going to slide directly into that pin port. However, there's one thing I should note first. Mine here has this plate on the bottom here, and that actually has this connector piece. Can you see that? All it is is just an extension so that when this Model 1 goes on here, it's the full piece. Do you see how this piece sticks out at the bend here? Were it not there, this would otherwise fit the Model 2 perfectly. So you would just remove that extra pin piece. However, I have that and I'm gonna be connecting a Model 1, so I'm gonna leave it in place. To help try and stabilize the Model 1 on the Sega CD, you do have this connector plate. Now you're gonna want it so these four tabs are facing upwards and just the two tabs are facing downwards. This slot here on the Model 1 is also going to align with this tab piece right here. So that's gonna go here, and these two pieces are gonna connect right there. Get them in place, slide it down. You'll see that the hole for the screw port aligns right here. For that here, I have this little brass screw. So I'm going to install that. Just a tiny little brass Phillips. It's in place. With those four tabs facing downward, they will slide and lock into these four holes here at the bottom of the Sega CD. At the same time, when I slide the model in, the cartridge port there will connect with the Genesis. Lining the two up, I'm gonna feel for it to slide in place. I'm in those holes. Now I'm gonna just simply slide it over and connect it. We're in place, nice and snug. With the two consoles now connected together, we're ready to hook it up to our television and to the power. Speaking of power, that's everyone's greatest concern when using this thing. The biggest gripe is that you have a power input on your Sega Genesis, of course, but guess what? You have a separate power input here on your Sega CD. That means somehow you have to connect both of these to an outlet or a power bar at the same time. Given that they're these big power bricks, it was always a beast to do. On the back here, we're also gonna note that there's a mixer stereo input here, and then there's an AV. We'll look at that momentarily. To start, I'm gonna hook up the RF, I'm gonna hook up the power, and the power to the Sega CD. With power to both consoles and the RF to the television, let's turn it on, noting that there's no console and no CD in the CD unit. What should happen is we're going to get a defaulted boot screen for the Sega CD. Don't be alarmed if it's making that noise. That's just it checking for a disc. As it notes there. Good thing is everything's running as should be and you get this banger to listen to. So at this point you are ready to go. You can start playing. However, We'd like to make some improvements in the video and audio qualities here. I showed you in a previous video here, this cable. This is a stereo input with an AV out. And we plug that into the front of the console here in that stereo jack. However, that will only give us the benefits of stereo audio for Genesis games, not for Sega CD. Now we did know before there is AV out on the back of the Sega CD. So what if we connect AV out to that and to the television. Follow the red and the white into the red and the white 
And again, if you have two different colors, that's fine, as long as you keep it consistent. Here, my white is gonna go into the white on the TV. The red goes from here to the red on the television as well. If you're using both yellows or some other colors, that's okay, just make them line. So I'm gonna connect this to the front. Oh, I've just connected the AV out. In order to access it, I'm gonna use this Tomy AV cable that I used. Again, I'm not gonna reconnect the audio because I already have the audio coming from the Sega CD, but I am gonna connect the video. Again, this plugs into the back of the Sega Genesis and this video to the television. Okay, video is going in. Let's listen again to the RF and then we're gonna jump over to that video input. Composite. Wow, listen to that. Getting a lot of that bass. Can really hear those drums. So we got the low end. It's coming out excellent. But what's missing? If you recall in the back of that Sega CD, there was a mixer cable, a stereo in. So we're gonna put one end of a stereo cable into that and the other end of a stereo cable into the stereo output of the Sega Genesis. Let's try that now. Connecting to the Genesis now. The high and the low. Let's go back to RF. Notice again how the drums are completely absent. Let's go back to that composite. So at this point, I'm now ready to go ahead and play Sega CD and enjoy it in its full, beautiful capabilities. I can improve the video output by getting something like an HD Retrovision component cable. However, right now, this AV cable from Tomy here was about $10. I'll have a link to that in the description below. I just use standard AV cables here to plug from the back of the CD into the television. The stereo cable's cheap. You can get these anywhere, mail to mail ends, and that's all it took was just to connect from one end to the back. I'll try and put a link in the description below as well. Of course, I'll connect these to the back of the television and make it more aesthetically pleasing than it is here, but otherwise, we're ready to game. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing as it always helps grow my channel. Until I see you guys again soon, I hope you all take care and be good to each other. Bye now.